Hi. Welcome to my channel. This is a video about environment pollution. I hope you will like it. So let's get started. You are watching part 2 of the video. In part 1 we already discussed three major pollutions like air, water, and land. In this video, we will discuss the other three pollutions like noise, light, and radioactive. Noise pollution. We know that a sound is a form of energy. Sound can travel in the air and is produced by the vibration of objects. Regular exposure to a higher sound level that impacts humans and other living organisms is known as sound pollution. Noise pollution, unwanted or excessive sound that can have deleterious effects on human health, wildlife, and environmental quality. Noise pollution is commonly generated inside many industrial facilities and some other workplaces, but it also comes from highway, railway, and airplane traffic and from outdoor construction activities. Sound waves are vibrations of air molecules carried from a noise source to the ear. Sound is typically described in terms of the loudness, amplitude, and the pitch, frequency, of the wave. Loudness, also called sound pressure level, or SPL, is measured in logarithmic units called decibels. The normal human ear can detect sounds that range between 0 decibel, hearing threshold, and about 140 decibels, with sounds between 120 decibels and 140 decibels causing pain, pain threshold. The ambient SPL in a library is about 35 decibels, while that inside a moving bus or subway train is roughly 85 decibels, Building construction activities can generate SPLs as high as 105 decibels at the source. SPLs decrease with distance from the source. Any sound above 85 decibels can cause hearing loss, and the loss is related both to the power of the sound as well as the length of exposure. 8 hours of 90 decibels sound can cause damage to your ears. Any exposure to 140 decibels sound causes immediate damage and causes actual pain. Some common sounds and their intensity in decibels are as follows. Mere complete silence, 0 decibels. Whisper, 15 decibels. Ticking of a watch, 20 decibels. A quiet conversation inside library, 45 decibels. Normal conversation, 60 decibels. Heavy city traffic, 85 decibels. Toilet flushing, 75 to 85 decibels. Noisy restaurant, 90 decibels. Baby crying, 110 dB. Concerts, 120 decibels. Jet engine, 120 decibels. A gunshot or firecracker, 140 decibels. Hearing range of different species. Every animal has a specific range of frequencies it can hear and is most sensitive to sounds in particular parts of its range. A couple of measures we'll be looking at for comparison here are hertz and decibels. We use hertz for measuring pitch and decibel, a logarithmic measure, for loudness. Humans have a decent pitch range, from about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. We call frequencies below the range of human hearing infrasonic, and frequencies above our range are ultrasonic. As for volume, the lower limit of audibility for humans, that is, the quietest sound we can hear, is zero decibel. Lots of animals can hear infrasonic and ultrasonic sounds beyond our capabilities. This includes most of our pets. Cats, dogs, rabbits, and guinea pigs can all hear wider pitch ranges than us. The greater wax moth has the best ultrasonic hearing in the world by far, going up to at least 300,000 hertz. Porpoise, 75 to 150,000. Beluga whale, 1,000 to 123,000. Bat, 2,000 to 110,000. Mouse, 1,000 to 91,000. Cat, 45 to 64,000. Dog, 67 to 45,000. Rabbit, 360 to 42,000. Cow, 23 to 35,000. Horse, 55 to 33,500. Sheep, 100 to 30,000. Elephant, 16 to 12,000. Owl, 200 to 12,000. Goldfish, 20 to 3,000. Chicken, 125 to 2,000. Tuna, 50 to 1,000. Types of noise pollution. Street traffic sounds from cars, buses, pedestrians, ambulances, etc. Construction sounds like drilling or other heavy machinery in operation. Airports, with constant elevated sounds from air traffic, that is planes taking off or landing. Workplace sounds, often common in open space offices. 
constant loud music in or near commercial venues. Industrial sounds like fans, generators, compressor, mills. Train stations traffic. Household sounds, from the television set to music playing on the stereo or computer, vacuum cleaners, fans and coolers, washing machines, dishwashers, lawnmowers, etc. Events involving fireworks, firecrackers, loudspeakers, etc. Conflicts generate noise pollution through explosions, gunfire, etc. The dysfunctions, in this case, are likely caused by the conflict and insecurity and less by the noise pollution in itself, although that compounds stress levels too. Sources and causes of noise pollution Industrialization Industrialization has led to an increase in noise pollution as the use of heavy machinery such as generators, mills, huge exhaust fans are used, resulting in the production of unwanted noise. Vehicles Increased number of vehicles on the roads are the second reason for noise pollution. Noise from transportation such as railway and aircraft, airports, with constant elevated sounds from air traffic, that is planes taking off or landing, train stations traffic. Events, weddings, festivals involve loudspeakers, fireworks, firecrackers. Construction sites, mining, construction of buildings, etc. add to the noise pollution. Human diseases caused by noise pollution. Hypertension. It is a direct result of noise pollution which is caused due to elevated blood levels for a longer duration. Hearing loss. Constant exposure of human ears to loud noise that are beyond the range of sound that human ears can withstand damages the eardrums, resulting in loss of hearing. Sleeping disorders. Lack of sleep might result in fatigue and low energy level throughout the day affecting everyday activities. Noise pollution hampers the sleep cycles leading to irritation and an uncomfortable state of mind. Cardiovascular issues. Heart-related problems such as blood pressure level. Stress and cardiovascular diseases might come up in a normal person and a person suffering from any of these diseases might feel a sudden shoot up in the level. Child development. Children appear to be more sensitive to noise pollution, and a number of noise pollution-related diseases and dysfunctions are known to affect children, from hearing impairment to psychological and physical effects. Also, children who regularly use music players at high volumes are at risk of developing hearing dysfunctions. In 2001, it was estimated that 12.5% of American children between the ages of 6 to 19 years had impaired hearing in one or both years. Dementia isn't necessarily caused by noise pollution, but its onset can be favored or compounded by noise pollution. Psychological dysfunctions and noise annoyance. Noise annoyance is, in fact, a recognized name for an emotional reaction that can have an immediate impact. Effects of noise pollution on wildlife and marine life. Noise pollution takes a major toll on the environment and human health alike. But according to National Geographic, it especially impacts wildlife. Loud sounds from air and car traffic, construction, and other human activities span across ecosystems. Many birds, bats, and insects rely on sound for mating, communicating, navigating, and hunting. Marine animals such as whales and dolphins, who rely on echolocation, are often beached due to loud noises from ships, seismic tests, and oil drills. Some of the loudest and most detrimental sounds in the sea are from naval sonar devices, whose noise can travel hundreds of miles through the water and is associated with mass strandings of whales and dolphins. Anthropogenic noise pollution is affecting a range of animals across multiple habitats. Animals are altering their natural behaviors or relocating to avoid noisy areas. Changes in animal behavior can have flow-on effects for whole ecosystems. Marine animals are also affected by noise from a range of human activities including commercial vessel traffic, oil and gas exploration, seismic surveys and military sonar. But under the surface is a symphony of sound. Sound that marine creatures rely on for their survival, to find food, to communicate, to navigate. The light vanishes meters below the surface, so the sound is really what supports life in water. But humans are increasingly polluting the ocean with noise, which is posing a threat to creatures from the smallest to the most majestic. Now we are facing a global issue that affects thousand species. Light doesn't penetrate very deep in water, so a lot of ocean life has evolved to use sound as its primary sense. 
Because water particles are more densely packed together than air, sound travels farther and faster in water. That makes it an efficient medium of communication at any depth or time of day. Just listen to this audio of how noise from a passing boat totally drowns out dolphin communication. But arguably the worst culprit of underwater sound pollution is a process that sounds like this. This is seismic surveying. It's a process that allows companies to locate spots on the ocean floor where they can drill for fossil fuels. Boats with about 30 to 40 air guns that all go off at once will move back and forth over large parts of the ocean. Bubbles from the horns expand and contract, typically every 10 seconds, creating a huge amount of acoustic energy that maps geological structures deep in the ocean floor. And it's about as loud as a jet at takeoff. This can go on for weeks at a time. A study of seismic survey noise between 1999 and 2009 found that air gun sounds were recorded almost 2,500 miles away from the survey ship itself. At some locations, they were recorded on 80% of days for over a year, and that changes how animals behave. A study by the Institute of Marine Science at the University of North Carolina found that reef fish abundance decreased by 78% during seismic surveying. This is what the reef looked like before seismic surveying in the area. And this? is what it looked like after. Undersea noise pollution is like the death of a thousand cuts. Each sound in itself may not be a matter of critical concern, but taken all together, the noise from shipping, seismic surveys, and military activity is creating a totally different environment than existed even 50 years ago. That high level of noise is bound to have a hard, sweeping impact on life in the sea. Dr. Sylvia Earl, Oceanographer. Light Pollution Light pollution is the presence of unwanted or excessive use of artificial light. Like noise pollution, light pollution is a form of waste energy that can cause adverse effects and degrade environmental quality. Moreover, because light, transmitted as electromagnetic waves, is typically generated by electricity, which itself is usually generated by the combustion of fossil fuels, it can be said that there is a connection between light pollution and air pollution, from fossil-fueled power plant emissions. Control of light pollution therefore will help to conserve fuel, and money, and reduce air pollution as well as mitigate the more immediate problems caused by the excessive light. As defined by the, International Dark Sky Association, light pollution refers to any inappropriate or excessive use of artificial light, which affects humans, wildlife, and the climate. Components of light pollution include, glare, excessive brightness that causes visual discomfort. Sky glow, brightening of the night sky over inhabited areas. Light trespass, light falling where it is not intended or needed. Clutter, bright, confusing and excessive groupings of light sources. Light pollution is increasing worldwide by as much as 2% with every passing year. And according to a 2016 article titled World Atlas of Artificial Night Sky Brightness, 80% of the world lives under light polluted skies with 99% of people in the United States and Europe not living under a dark sky at all. The problem is light pollution, the urban glow that obscures all but the moon and a few bright stars and planets. Bob Parks wanted, wants to do something about it. He's executive director of the International Dark Sky Association. Bob, good morning. Good morning. How big a problem is this? Well, it's pretty big. Uh, what we... Associate is good. Light has always historically been associated as good, uh, but you can get too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're seeing is just since the advent of the electric light, we want more. So over a period of a century, we've just added much, much more light to the environment to the point where now it's a real problem. We spend $110 billion annually on wasted light. Mm -hmm. uh, it produces 750 million tons of CO2. We just need to learn to use it more intelligently. Effect of light pollution.
Effects on Astronomy and Night Vision Light pollution adversely affects professional and amateur astronomers, as well as casual observers of the night sky, because it severely reduces the visibility of stars and other celestial objects. Increasing energy consumption. Lighting that emits too much light or shines when and where it's not needed is wasteful. Wasting energy has huge economic and environmental consequences. Health risks. Humans evolved to the rhythms of the natural light dark cycle of day and night. The spread of artificial lighting means most of us no longer experience truly dark nights. Research suggests that artificial light at night can negatively affect human health. Like most life on Earth, humans adhere to a circadian rhythm, biological clock, a sleep-wake pattern governed by the day-night cycle. Artificial light at night can disrupt that cycle. Our bodies produce the hormone melatonin in response to circadian rhythm. Melatonin helps keep us healthy. It has antioxidant properties, induces sleep, boosts the immune system, lowers cholesterol, and helps the functioning of the thyroid, pancreas, ovaries, testes and adrenal glands. Nighttime exposure to artificial light suppresses melatonin production. Some general effects of light pollution on wildlife. Implications on wildlife. Light pollution affects both diurnal and nocturnal animals, birds, reptiles, and mammals, but the nocturnal creatures are particularly at risk. Dark skies are now hundreds and thousands of times brighter than they were a century ago. The glare of the artificial light confuses nocturnal creatures. Light pollution has radically altered the day-night clocks, which have far-reaching consequences on organisms' natural behavior and life-sustaining activities. For example, diurnal animals don't get enough sleep resulting in not enough time for the body to rest and repair itself. They fail to reproduce or migrate and end up getting attacked by predators. Habitat loss is a major consequence of light pollution. Light attracts some animals like moths, frogs, sea turtles, hummingbirds, etc., which results in their displacement from their natural habitat, thus making them vulnerable to predation. It can also have counter-effects, repelling or excluding some of the organisms from their habitat. The impacts of light pollution are highly species-specific. After hatching, the survival of baby sea turtles depends on their detection of the bright horizon to guide their journey towards the ocean. The bright artificial light coming from the beachside disorients the journey of these hatchlings towards beachside residencies. Migratory birds, which rely on natural light, starlight, moonlight, for navigation during migration and hunting, have been severely impacted by intense light pollution. Artificial light causes them to migrate too early or too late and sometimes leads them into dangerous environments, thus missing out on the ideal climatic conditions for nesting, foraging, and other activities. Artificial lighting from car headlights has also been responsible for attracting many animals from the safety of their den only to get killed in roadside accidents. Radioactive pollution. Radioactive pollution refers to the physical pollution of living organisms and their environment. It happens due to the release of radioactive substances into the environment during nuclear explosions and nuclear weapons testing, production and decommissioning of nuclear weapons, the mining of radioactive minerals, the handling and disposal of radioactive waste, and accidents at nuclear power plants. Radioactive pollutants, radioactive contamination sources include the mining and testing of radioactive materials, nuclear power stations, nuclear weapons as well as medical diagnostics and treatment procedures. The key causes of emissions are radionuclides, they release beta particles and gamma rays, radioactive substances, etc. Types of radioactive pollution Continuous pollution Continuous radioactive pollution is the type of pollution constantly coming from uranium mines, nuclear reactors, and test laboratories, where the radioactive contaminants are always present. Occasional pollution Occasional radioactive pollution is the type of pollution that occurs during nuclear tests or during experimental tests on radioactive substances. Accidental pollution Accidental radioactive pollution is the type of pollution that occurs when certain experiments involving dangerous substances fail, and the substances used for experimentation get out of control. Examples of radioactive contaminants Radioactive materials are those materials or elements that emit radiation, thus they are not stable and get transformed into other radioactive or non-radioactive materials. 
The harm that they can cause depends on the radioactive elements and their half-time function, the time needed for their concentration to be reduced to half due to radioactive decay processes. Basically, the higher the half-time, the lower the effects on human health. Radioactive elements with a short and very short half-time pose a serious threat to human health because of their hazardous effects. Most of the radioactive materials have half-lives of hundreds of thousands of years and, once generated, may persist in the environment for a very long time. Many radioactive elements, materials, are naturally present in the environment. Most of them are used in nuclear power plants, and as basic components of nuclear weapons. Examples of this type of materials are, cesium-137, used for radiation therapy in medicine, to treat cancer. Strontium-90, used for thermoelectric generators and portable power sources for space vehicles, weather stations, etc. Plutonium-238, used as a heat source for radioisotope thermoelectric generators. Uranium-235, used as fuel for nuclear reactors. Other examples of radioactive elements include, chromium-51, cobalt-57 and 60, calcium-47, iodine-123, krypton-85, nickel-63, radium-226, strontium-85, thorium-229, tritium, uranium-234, radon. Radon Radon is a naturally occurring radioactive element symbolized by Rn and atomic number 86 in the periodic table. It is the heaviest known noble gas in the periodic table, nine times denser than air. It is obtained from the natural radioactive decay of uranium and other radioactive elements that are present in soil and rocks. After escaping from the Earth's crust, radon decays further into other radioactive elements. Radon poses a major threat to human health, and therefore, it is a matter of great concern to all human beings. Being a monoatomic gas, radon can easily penetrate the walls and windows of a building. As we breathe, radon particles get accumulated inside our body and directly alters our DNA, thereby causing lung cancer. After smoking, radon is the largest known cause of lung cancer around the world. Causes of radioactive pollution Nuclear accidents from nuclear power plants. Different sources of energy are being discovered in the postmodern world. Among them is nuclear energy, which, due to its high latent strength, is touted as the most efficient source of energy. Reports indicate that the high latent power is due to its high level of radiation. Nuclear power plant accidents examples, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster, 2011, Chernobyl disaster, 1986, and Three Mile Island accident, 1979. The use of nuclear weapons as weapons of mass destruction, the use of nuclear missiles and atomic bombs, a form of nuclear energy, in the Second World War explains not only the cause but also the damaging nature of radioactive pollution or contamination. The effects of those two strikes in Hiroshima and Nagasaki that prompted the end of the war in 1945 have been seen to date with children born with complications such as mental retardation as well as conditions like autism and other disorders. The number of cancer cases present in the two towns is more than those of the rest of Japan. Mining sectors. Mining primarily includes the mineral ores being excavated, which are then divided into smaller, manageable parts. Radium and uranium, for example, are naturally occurring and similarly radioactive in the environment. Hence, mining increases the natural geological processes by moving these materials from underneath the earth to the surface. Other minerals with a hint of radiation are thorium, plutonium, radon, potassium, carbon and phosphorus. Radioactive material spillage. When ships strike glaciers or coral reefs and end up dumping contaminants on rivers and in the environment, there have been cases of spillages across oceans. Many of these substances have a large amount of radiation, including petroleum products, which can be harmful to the environment. Tests on radiation. It has been shown that radiation has a lot of fascinating properties, which has inspired a lot of scientists to perform experiments to learn more about it. It is one of the key elements in the treatment of cancer. Chemotherapy is most often used to treat cancer, since cancer cells grow and multiply much more quickly than most cells in the body. Though chemotherapy is an effective way to treat many types of cancer, chemotherapy treatment also carries a risk of side effects. Some chemotherapy side effects are mild and treatable, while others can cause serious complications.
Nuclear Waste Handling and Disposal The radioactive wastes are of three categories high level, low level and transuranic. The transuranium elements are the chemical elements with atomic numbers greater than 92. They mainly comprise of the disposal from nuclear weapons, the cleaning materials from nuclear plants, military installations, emitted from plutonium processing and other radioisotopes from hospitals and laboratories. The handling and disposal of nuclear waste may generate low to medium radiation over a long period of time. Their effects are not only hard to predict but may not be easily distinguishable as the radioactivity may contaminate and propagate through air, water, and soil as well. Moreover, identifying locations of some nuclear waste is not easy. Defensive weapon development. Generally, the manufacturing of defensive weapons capable of releasing radioactivity from the nuclear materials treated poses a high health risk. However, unless an event happens, the existing guidelines would not allow the release of any substantial amount of radiation. Effects of radioactive pollution. The effects of radioactive pollution depend on strength of the radiation involved. The rate of diffusion and deposition of the radioactive pollutant in the given environmental conditions. The half-life of the radioactive pollutant. The tenure for which the radioactive pollutant was exposed to the environment. The effects of radioactive pollution are as follows. Radioactive pollution has the capacity to destroy an animal or plant cell and even alters the cell. Thus can cause diseases like cancer or even death. It may result in the genetic mutation affecting not only the living organism but can also result in defective and diseases in newborn babies. Exposure to radiation can result in cancer. It may also result in the burning effect. It may also result in blistering, redness of the skin and even damage to the tissue of the skin. It may result in soil damage as well as the plant and can have the capacity to leave the soil infertile. Thanks for watching. If you like the video please subscribe to the channel and share the video. Also, you can watch my other videos.